In this economy, many people are being priced out of owning a home, and some are even being priced out of affording the home that they currently own due to property taxes and insurance. Then even on top of that, many people cannot afford the rent in some of the places where they would love to live. This is something that is really common and I see reflected in the comments of my videos about buying a home. So in today's video, I just wanted to share some of the alternative options to expensive housing that might work for you if you're struggling to purchase a home or if you're just struggling to afford any kind of housing these days. These ideas might not all work for you, but the more options and more ideas that you have, the better you'll be able to find something that works for you so that you find affordable housing and can manage on the amount of money that you're currently bringing in until something can change and you can either increase your income or afford a different housing solution. So let's get started. Let's get right into it. And the first option is to actually rent a smaller size apartment or house than what you currently are looking for. So maybe this looks like renting a duplex or renting a small studio apartment. Whatever you can find that is the more affordable option in your area, this is something that you might need to do for a while. There is nothing wrong with renting. Renting is a perfectly smart choice financially in certain areas, especially when it's so much cheaper than trying to buy a home. So finding a no frills apartment to rent is a great option if you're unable to buy a home or afford a more expensive option than a very basic apartment. If you are going to rent and you want to try to stabilize your housing costs, you can try to rent with an extended lease. So instead of doing a year to year lease or something else even shorter, you're gonna want to ask if they have anything like 18 month or two year lease. So that way you can kind of get your rent cost into your budget and make sure that they don't change for at least 18 to 24 months. This can be really helpful when costs are going up in all areas. So it's definitely a, something you can ask for. They might not have it, but if you have that option, it can kind of stabilize your housing costs for a while. A similar idea is to negotiate your rent on that apartment or house with your landlord. This does not work for everyone, but if you're renting from an individual person, you may have better luck here. So you can offer to make repairs around the house. You can offer to do something that they normally include, like taking care of the grass or taking care of small things around the house. Or maybe you can even offer some sort of trade with a skill that you have to the landlord. No matter what option you go with here, you can always ask. It doesn't hurt to ask. And some people can save a couple hundred dollars on their rent by doing this. It doesn't take necessarily a lot of time and maybe you already have those skills. So this way you can save money on renting by just negotiating your rent with that landlord. Okay, so maybe you can't rent a house. You can't rent an apartment. That's too much. Maybe you have to look at renting a room. This is actually something I have personally done in my own life. I have rented a room before, actually a couple times. This is definitely something that is harder based on the life situation that you're in. So if you are a mother with a couple young kids, you might not be able to just rent a room. But if you are single, an adult, it is really a lot easier to find a house where you can rent a room. You might have friends that are doing it or you have someone in your network. If you just ask around if anyone is renting out rooms, even if they're not actually advertising renting rooms, sometimes people will hear that you are actually looking for something and they will offer to you to rent a room. It works out well because they already know you. They were maybe thinking about trying to find a way to earn extra money and they have the room and they like you. So this is something that could work out really well for both parties. It actually is what happened to me at least one time in my life. I was looking for a new place to live and I was hoping to save money and my future sister-in-law offered me a room in her house. So I rented that room and it saved me a ton of money right before I entered a new phase of life. And it was so, so helpful. And and it's one way to really reduce your housing costs by renting just the space that you're using. And usually when you're renting a room, you still have access to the common areas of the house. So living rooms and a kitchen and bathroom and all of that. So definitely look around. There are listings online for this if you are looking for it. And you can also ask people in your actual network to find a room to rent. Similar to renting a room is to actually get roommates. So maybe you can't rent an apartment on your own because it's unaffordable, but you can find 
find someone else that is also looking to rent and then you can either rent an apartment or house together. This can also be great because you can split the other costs of renting, like splitting the utility bill. So everything ends up being a lot cheaper with roommates is a great option. Another way to do this is actually to live with family. So maybe your family has a home that they've owned and you can move in back with them, or maybe you can consolidate two households. So maybe you own a home and your mother owns a home, but they're both too expensive. So you consolidate into one house or the other, or you even look for another one. So this is something that if you have family that is available to this and open to this and you can stay in them, this is something that you can do. Of course, not everyone has family where this is an option, but if you do and you're privileged enough to have that option, it's a great way to save money and to cut back and have a more affordable housing option. Another alternative to home ownership is currently RV living. This is something that actually is a great option, especially if you are someone that already owns an RV and it is a little bit more of a unaffordable option if you have to go buy a new RV right now because those have definitely risen in price over time because so many people are looking for housing alternatives. But if you actually own an RV already or you have come into owning one somehow, this can be a really good option because it's easy to live in one. I love them. I actually like going on vacations in RVs. It's kind of fun. It has everything you need in one space. And then you can also generally find either someone that has land where you can park it or you can have a place where you pay a small fee per month to hook up your RV. So this is something that is an option if you have an RV or you plan to get one or come into one. If you are over the incredible cost of owning a home, this can be a good option as well. On a smaller scale than the RV is the option of van life and van life has been more and more popular over the last probably decade. I would say there has been a lot of romanticizing this style of life on YouTube, especially I've watched a lot of videos about people living in their vans. I know people that have bought vans and like converted them to living spaces. So it's definitely something that is doable. I think it's a little bit more doable for some people than others. If you're older or have health issues, this is probably not the best option, but it is an option to unaffordable housing. So you can find a van, convert it, live in that van, or even just find a larger vehicle if that is what you have to do. Living in your van or even less efficiently a car is something that is possible. Honestly, some of the van life videos where they convert it to a very nice van is kind of expensive. So it definitely depends on how much money you have to put into this and how long you think you can do it. But it is an option and it also does give you freedom if you have been wanting to travel more or you want to just drive around and be a nomad if that lifestyle appeals to you. Van life might be the right option for you. Maybe you don't want to be on four wheels. So another option is a mobile home. So you can either rent or buy a mobile home a lot more affordably than a regular home. So this is an option if you are able to find and basically a mobile home somewhere that is in your price range, you can opt for that. It's going to be smaller than a regular home most likely, but that's okay. It's probably still enough space for you. And it can be a really good option to also still be close enough to where you want to live, but not be living in a car more or less. So if none of those options work for you, maybe you can find a job that offers housing. So there are a couple options for this. You can look into an apartment leasing job. So usually these jobs are where you are doing all of the work to do paperwork and lease apartments to people. And these jobs often come with a paid for apartment. So you are able to live in the complex for free because it's included with your job. So you can either get free or super reduced rent. And this is a great option if you are really just not sure where to go next, but you are looking for a job as well. This can be a good option if you need a safe and affordable place to live. So maybe check out being a leasing agent somewhere, but this is a sales job more or less. So it's definitely not for everyone if you don't have that skill set. Another option is to do house sitting. So you can take basically longer term house sitting jobs and bounce around from place to place. If you are super flexible in where you live specifically, you can do house sitting jobs where you basically stay at someone's house, maybe take care of their pets, their home, whatever they need while they are on a vacation. This is uh, an option in certain areas more than others. So it might be available to you or not, but it's something to look into if you are kind of looking for a place to stay and you're able to kind of move around more often like week to 
week or even month to month. So you can look for house sitting jobs that include a place to stay. A similar option if you are really good with kids and have a good background in that, you can be a nanny. There are some live in nanny and caregiver type jobs. So you can either look for taking care of kids or taking care of someone that's maybe elderly. There are these live in positions where you are given room and board basically as part of your payment for your job. So you are trading your work for a place to live. But if you are unable to afford housing outside of that, it's a great option. And especially if you have those caregiver skills already, it's a great way to utilize those and also secure housing for yourself. So the next option to find more affordable housing is to check with the local housing authorities. Basically with this, you check with the local housing authority, see if there are any affordable options for housing, see if you can get on the list because often, unfortunately, there are long wait lists for things like this. So if you're looking for affordable housing and a cheap alternative to purchasing or renting an expensive home, this is not gonna be something that's instant. It usually is something that in some areas can even take years, but at least months. So it's probably not going to be instant, but you can definitely check and see if there are any options near you. One more option is to be willing to relocate. So if you are someone that is willing to relocate where you currently live to a more affordable area, this is a great way to find housing that you can pay for with your income. This of course does not work for everyone. If you have family and you can't leave them, or if you're unable to move to a different area, or if honestly you just are worried about finding a job because you don't have a remote job. This can be a really hard option, but it is something that some people do in order to afford housing. They can't buy a house in California, so they relocate to Arizona and buy something there, or they relocate across the US to where I live in Tennessee and buy a home here. They're able to afford something that they couldn't afford in their own area. So being willing to or able to relocate can give you a more affordable housing option, and some people take that. And the final option, which is kind of similar to maybe the first option where you go from looking for a house to renting something smaller is to downsize. So maybe you can afford a house, but it's a lot smaller than you're looking for originally. Maybe you are currently in a home and it's just unaffordable with the high utilities and the high insurance. That is something that happens to a lot of people in certain areas where those prices have risen dramatically over the last couple of years. Places like Florida, people are being priced out of what they currently own. So maybe you have have to downsize to something smaller. So instead of a home, you downsize to a condo or to something that's really small, maybe still a house or maybe a condo, something that's definitely much smaller than you were doing. This can save you money on your housing and it can be an option that keeps you in the area you're in. Maybe this isn't ideal for you, but it allows you to stay where you are in the area that you love, but still be able to afford housing and have a more affordable lifestyle with that smaller downsized housing solution. So these are a few of the options that you can choose if you've been priced out of home ownership or if you've been priced out of your area in general from owning or renting something larger. These are some ideas. If you have any other ideas for people, leave them in the comments below. I'm sure I missed some. There are lots of alternatives to the expensive housing market that we currently have. And I know that unfortunately, a lot of people are being forced into homelessness. And I hope that some of these options can maybe keep you out of that situation. This list had a lot of different options and maybe you're able to do one of them or or even multiple of them over time and get yourself in a better position or wait for housing costs to come down, which may never happen, but hopefully it does so that people are able to afford housing a little bit easier in their areas. I hope that this happens for you. And in the meantime, definitely check out this next video. I will be rooting you on and good luck finding the housing alternative that's right for you.